Well, I was just thinking about the lungs actually, and I thought I'd illustrate what's going on with this bloom. Now, this bloom could represent the whole lungs, or it could represent a single alveolus. It doesn't make too much difference, really. But first of all, what's going on is we're inflating the lungs with air and we notice there's air in the lungs. But of course, we're breathing in and out. So we're going to breathe in and we're going to breathe out. Now, the amount of air in this balloon now represents the situation where you've just finished breathing out with normal tidal ventilation, normal tidal volume. And the reason this is so important is this is the state of the chest and the lungs when there's no active muscular activity going on. So when you're at rest, you're in this slightly exhaled state when you've just finished with a normal tidal volume. And when you stop breathing, when you don't breathe anymore, when you die, your last breath will be a breath out and you'll go to that relaxed state. So we're now in this relaxed state and in, in males that's about two and a half litres of air in there. But of course I want to breathe in, so I breathe in and the capacity goes up by about 500 mils. Then I want to breathe out, so it goes down. Back down to that resting state of two and a half litres of air. And I want to breathe in again. 500 mils. I want to breathe out again. 500 mils. Normal tidal volume. And the analogy is good because inspiration is an active muscular process. Expiration is this passive recoil process. But then I want to breathe in as much as I possibly can. And if I take a breath in as much as I possibly can, all the way in as much as I possibly can. This is called the inspiratory reserve volume. So that's going to blow the lungs up. So we're now at the inspiratory reserve volume. I can't possibly take another breath in. Can't possibly breathe in again. Inspiratory reserve volume. Good to have for the fight or flight situation if you need to run after your prey or escape from a predator, this is a really useful thing to have. Or in modern parliaments if you want to go for a jog or play a game of football. So I now go back down to my normal tidal levels and breathe that out. I'm now back at my normal two and a half litres. Tidal volume in, tidal volume out. But then I make this massive effort to breathe out as much as I can. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. And I breathe out as much as I possibly can. Now that's called the expiratory reserve volume. And I get to a point where I <coughs> can't breathe out anymore. That's the expiratory reserve volume that I've exhaled. And what is left now, I can't exhale that. That is the residual volume or the residual capacity. Now, if my lung collapses, if I get a pneumothorax, it can actually go down a little bit more. But uh, in physiology, that's my residual volume. So let's go back up to tidal volume. Back at tidal volume now. Breathe in. 500 mils. Breathe out. Now, if I take the absolute maximum breath in, the inspiratory reserve volume, so now I can't breathe any more, can't breathe it any more. Then I breathe out as much as I possibly can. So that's the expiratory reserve volume. And the combination of the inspiratory reserve volume from the very top of the inspiratory reserve volume when it's completely blown up to now when I've exhaled as much as I possibly can, that is the vital capacity of the lungs. So let's look at this now on a graph and then we'll look at it on a graphic to clarify it. So we're carrying on now with our balloon analogy. So this represents the balloon, or it could represent a single alveolus, or it could represent the lungs as a whole. And what we've drawn here is the lungs when they are at rest. So we've just completed a normal tidal volume exhalation in this situation, we've just breathed out. And that is when the ribs and the intercostal muscles are relaxed. 
And we've noted from the spirogram that in men that equals about two and a half litres of air in that position. But when we want to breathe in, with normal tidal ventilation, we're going to breathe in. So more air is going to come in here. So that's going to expand. Not a huge amount, it's only 500 mils. But that's going to be the expansion that we get with the tidal volume. So the distance from there to there, that distance there, that is the tidal volume, the 500 mils of tidal volume. So we've gone from two and a half litres of air at rest in the lungs to three litres now we've inhaled in this normal tidal flow when we are at rest. But then we decide we'd like to breathe in as much as we possibly can. So we have a really big breath in now. And that's going to take us up to the inspiratory reserve volume. So we now have this huge breath in as much as we possibly can. Breathe in, breathe in, breathe in until we can't get any more in. And that's going to increase that volume as we see with this green line here. So that's going to be the inspiratory reserve volume. And that goes from where we normally stop breathing in with tidal ventilation to the absolute maximum we can possibly breathe in. So from where we normally stop breathing in to the maximum we can possibly ever breathe in. And we've noted in men that's about 3,100 mils of air and in women it's about 1,900, 1,900 mils of air. But then of course we might want to decide we want to breathe out as much as we possibly can. So we finish breathing out here as normal. Then we go, oh, breathe out as much as we possibly can. Breathe out, breathe out, breathe out until we can't breathe out anymore. And that takes us down to a lower volume of total air in the lungs. And this, of course, is what we call the expiratory reserve volume. So the expiratory reserve volume is from where we normally stop breathing out to all we can possibly ever breathe out, no matter how hard we try. That would be that red line there, the expiratory reserve volume. And we've noticed that's about 1200 mils in men and about 700 mils in women. So from where we normally stop breathing out with tidal ventilations to the maximum expiratory reserve volume. And this is the minimum amount of air we can ever have in the lungs in a physiological, in a physiological situation. But then of course we could have another situation where we go from where we breathe out all we possibly can to we breathe in all we possibly can. So that would take us from the maximum exhalation to the absolute maximum inhalation. That would give us that capacity there, which have drawn in orange. And this is what we call the vital capacity. And we've noted that's about 4,800 mils in men and about 3,100 mils in women. So that is the vital capacity. And of course we can calculate the vital capacity because the vital capacity is going to be the expiratory reserve volume added to the tidal volume added to the inspiratory reserve volume is going to give us the vital capacity. But we notice that when we're finished breathing out, no matter how hard we try to breathe out, so we breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, but we've still got some air left in here, in this area here, that we can't breathe out. And this, of course, is going to be the residual volume, this residual volume left in here, that we can't breathe out under physiological circumstances. And the residual volume we've noted is about 1,200 mils in men and about 1100 mils in women. And another figure that we noted was the inspiratory capacity. And the inspiratory capacity is when we normally stop breathing out, which is just here, all the way to the maximum inhalation capacity there. That's the inspiratory capacity. So from when we stop breathing out normally in tidal ventilations to the inspiratory reserve volume. 
So the inspiratory capacity can be calculated by adding the inspiratory reserve volume to the normal tidal volume. Now under normal circumstances the lungs are held open because remember the outside of the lungs is continuous with the visceral pleural membrane. You can't separate the outside of the lungs from the visceral pleural membrane. And between the visceral and the parietal pleural membrane there's a negative pressure of four millimeters of mercury. So the lungs are normally being held open. This is what is called the uh, transpulmonary pressure. So the transpulmonary pressure is holding the lungs open. But if that pressure is lost because we lose the negative pressure between the pleural membranes, then can you see there's nothing holding the lungs open so the lungs can fall in even more. But this is why if we have a penetrating chest injury, for example, we'll lose the pressure in the, between the pleural membranes There'll be nothing sucking the lungs open anymore, holding the lungs open, and they will then collapse down because the pressure in the alveoli will be the same as the atmospheric pressure outside. And this will mean the lungs collapse down even further, of course. So physiologically, this is not going to happen. But this, this is the area of additional collapse if we lose the transpulmonary pressure. This will be the situation when the lung is collapsed and we'll need to reinflate that as an emergency measure, perhaps with an underwater sealed drain. So, but it's, it's interesting from this physiological point of view because it gives us a, a theoretical figure that goes from there to there, the total amount of air that the lungs can hold. And this is called the total lung capacity. But the total lung capacity in men is about six liters of air and in women it's about 4.2 liters of air. And the other interesting thing we could note on this diagram is this area at the top here in the conducting bronchial passages in the nose in the trachea in the in the voice box and this is called the dead space so during normal tidal ventilation 500 mils goes in 500 mils goes out through the mouth but only 350 mils of that gets down to the respiratory sections of the lung. The rest is just trapped in these conducting airways. And this is what we call the dead space. So that shows us the dead space quite nicely as well. So we see here we have the different lung capacities. We have the total lung capacity there in blue. In yellow here we have the inspiratory capacity. In orange we have the vital capacity. In red we have the expiratory reserve volume. In green we have the inspiratory reserve volume and in blue we have the normal tidal capacity.